he said, yeah, 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 you have to find some venture capitalists. I know some. <laughs> uh, would you like to talk to them? Well, I mean, this was like the earth shifting under my feet. And once it became real to me that it was possible to start a company to solve my problem, to get out from under the corporate bureaucracy and, and, and maybe get out there and make things happen, there was no possibility that I could not try, not try to do that. Okay. So for you, it was more of a realization that this is even something I can do, that I'm allowed to do. And yes. that, that would have been, so this is in the late 80s, right? So the world yeah. was, a, was a quite different place. It, I find it, it super interesting that you were taking artificial intelligent classes in the late 80s. And, and well, today it's like at the tip of everybody's tongue. This is you know, 30 years, 40 years of the making for, for where you're at today. Well, it was then too, in a way. Uh, it's well known that AI goes through boom and bust cycles. So in those days, it was hot. Uh, not quite as frenzied as it is today, but, <laughs> but, but still, it was a big deal. Right. And uh, all the big cor corporations were uh, setting up AI centers. And Lockheed had set up one that was equivalent to a master's. And okay. I got, and so everybody was real excited about AI. So they sent me out there for six months, equivalent to a master's at, at uh, on Palo Alto. The Stanford professors came up. So what happened, though, was real-based expert systems as the technology didn't really scale. Uh, AI has always been hyped. Everybody was hyped. This is, this is it. We're going to have talking machines. We're going to have everything. Rosie the right. robot. That's all here. And it didn't scale. Right. And, and my first company, we ran into the same problem. Right. And, uh, and, that, and that was an interesting thing, though, and which is a good, I think, point for your audience, is in a sense, we didn't really solve the problem we were aiming at, but we were trying to solve a very critical real-world problem, which was telemetry analysis. But in order to do it in those days, we had to write our own networking software because AI then, as AI machine learning today, requires huge computational resources. Right. So in order to build a, a center or a system that people could use, we had to put the data interface on one big computer, the inference engine on another big computer, and the user interface on a third big computer. But there was no software in those days. We had to write our own software to communicate processes on the things. Well, when expert systems didn't pan out, that company went off and became a middleware company. And they eventually went on, uh, were acquired, and my company went public and today a lot of the financial information out there in the net what network the real-time stuff goes over the bus that started way back then when we were wow. trying to solve telemetry problems so one advice i have to anybody who's thinking about uh, getting out there and starting a company solve a real problem <laughs> you know don't, don't do it because you have a cool idea like i'm going to start an ai company because ai is cool and lots of right. people are doing that what problem do you think you can solve well, and there's two different ways, and I just our last episode we talked about this a lot. There's two different ways to solve problems: you can innovate or you can invent, right? And you were inventing new AI back in eighty in the eighties. Oh, yeah. Now it's been innovated. That original technology that you guys created been innovated, innovated, innovated over and over and over to be what it is today for you for the company today, right? So yeah, but sometimes sometimes you kind of reach a dead end. Through yes. innovation, and you have to innovate. You have to invent something new. 